at some other stage. But it says be protein greedy when socialising. And that's a very good clue for hypoglycemic in general. If you see a prawn and mayo salad and what you do, you grab the prawn, shake off the mayo, eat the prawns and let the rabbits eat the rest. Because that's got the protein, it'll buffer your blood sugar, you've got a good chance of having no bad reaction. Um, try training three or four local restaurants. This was really intended as a talk to help young blokes to be able to you know, not be too self-conscious, be able to take girls out on a, a, a date and, and be human beings rather than something else. Um, Thai restaurant, soy sauce only, Chinese restaurant, soy sauce only, steakhouse, Italian, high protein, no sauce, no gravy. Repeat any successful meals. With Chinese food we often recommend having like a, an omelette with prawns and vegetables as your first dish at a new, new Chinese restaurant, soy sauce only. And if that works you, you, you work off their menu and see what they can do. If, it, if, if you feel rotten afterwards, don't, don't do it again. Just let it be, go somewhere else. Re repeat any successful meals, let them know what and how to order. Try to build up two or four successful meals at each restaurant for your own variety. Take friends to your trained restaurants for meals before taking your new girlfriend. We did say it was intended for young blokes to, to start to feel a bit confident that they don't have to be just eating out of a plastic Tupperware that they brought from home <laughs> and um, being a recluse and never having a life. Take, uh, so take away quick meals, barbecue chicken a quarter any time, no stuffing, no skin, often they put rubbish on the skin, food colour and different things that you don't need. Half a chicken if you're out all day, especially if you've got access to refrigeration, um, get them to cut the half chicken up into three pieces. Next one's an interesting one. Steak sandwich, no sauce, no bread. Just a piece of steak in the chicken bag and um, gobble that down on your merry way and that will, that will keep your blood sugars good. Sushi with fish, meat or prawn fill, maximum two a week. A sushi with a high protein fill will work. Um, but you can't have too many of them because they've got white rice and wasabi sauce and you, you, if, you, if you make them your main thing, you'll, it'll backfire. Am I moving around too much? No, it's good. Wraps, chicken and avocado is a probably good combo. Um, wraps are not use free, but they're generally low in use for people that have to be off yeast as well. Um, Subway have wraps in case you didn't know that. You'd have like a chicken and salad wrap. Obviously no beetroot because that'll have sugar in it and you don't have sauces, you have salt and pepper. Eat a good protein meal before leaving home for the wedding, the date, the party. Um, it's not good for hypoglycemics to arrive somewhere starving. Right there starving, you'll, you, you, you'll eat what everyone else is eating, you won't pick and choose your food, and you have to be in a position where you do just that. You pick and choose your food well, and you'll have less reactions, or no reactions if you choose very well. Buy a quarter of the chicken on the way, so everyone going to the wedding, you're running late as you, you do, getting your makeup right, um, or waiting for your wife to get her makeup right. <laughs> and then you pull over, get a quarter of a barbecue chook, chook on the way, and gobble that down. And when you arrive, you'll be well fed in the head. And like I said, pick and choose your food so that you don't eat food that's going to knock you around too much. Um, School, uni, work day, prepare food at home to tide you through the day. Half sandwiches, chicken pieces, rissoles, slices, quiche, frittatas, and like we've got here. Um, some people do a lot of food preparation on a Sunday. I think Claire alluded to that, that she makes her own rissoles and things on a Sunday, cooks up big. Um, it, it's not a bad idea and the sort of food that you can eat during the week. Some people will just boil a dozen eggs peel them. If you want to have a hot boiled egg, um, you, you put it in a mug, pour boiling water over it and you've got a hot boiling egg quick, fairly quickly in the morning without having done a lot on that particular morning, but again, that we're all rushing to work. Um, a steel thermos can be the best friend for hypoglycemics. You get, they're, they're usually one litre. They can give you three meals. Um, you can mince up vegetables and noodles and rice, obviously brown rice, and um, make a, a big pot and just keep 
before I get into there. Um, you can even prefer for people like hairdressers, uh, mints in there. You can be drinking out of a mug without and still look professional. Whereas you, you certainly don't want to get spilling sandwich bits of salad on your on your blouse while you're, you're trying to work with people. So you can actually drink your food and, and keep going. Um, I remember actually Claire made that story about horrible bosses. One of my patients worked in a bank and in those days, you, you know, you, you worked your way up in the bank and the older people tended to be above you and they, it wasn't on merit and had nothing to do with uni degrees and things, but the accountant used to be a cranky old fella and used to go around and she, she used to do a four hour shift every day, a, a 10 to two. And she would want to eat at midday every day because she had to feed her brain and when you're working hard you, you actually can't wait two and a half hours, you sometimes have to wait every two hours or sooner. In fact that's another rule of hypoglycemic that's not in the top ten. You should eat every two hours with exertion, exercise, hot weather, travel and study, all of those things you should all blood away from your brain and give it other parts of your body, eat sooner. So okay, he'd be, he'd be walking around and she'd go to the toilet at midday every day and he'd be well, like huffy but he couldn't stop her going to the toilet. She put a straw into a, one of those Devondale half litre milks, guzzle it down, she wasn't allergic to milk of course, okay, and do a wee and come back to work. But if she didn't do that she was making all sorts of expensive mistakes the rest of the day and she just couldn't cope but she, doing that she was on top of it, she was bright, smiley, um, terrific at her job and um, the, the, the cranky accountant would always be agitated while she was away but only for minutes at a time and he couldn't stop her going to the bathroom and he couldn't stop her going to the kitchen. <laughs> um, with your steel thermos we, could, we can put soup in it. Some, there are some cans on the shelves. Um, we used to write the names but they keep changing their ingredients but there will be like a Heinz can that probably has no sugar and nothing that you can't eat in it. It might be beef and veggie, it might be chicken and something, but if you read all the labels and pick well, you could mass produce that for, for your steel thermos. And um, again, having three meals out of it, out of a one litre thermos, it, it kind of looked after your, your working day just about. Always plan ahead, ring the restaurant, I'm allergic to sugar, what can I eat? And remember, Claire was talking about insulin and, and all the mechanisms of hypoglycemia. Well, that's too hard for most people. If you just want people to, to feed you right, say, I'm allergic to sugar, what can I eat? Or if the ambulance comes and you've got a, a, a crook foot and they, they're going to take you away, I'm allergic to sugar, don't put sugar in my drip, I don't want to eat sugar. You, you'll get looked after better if you say you're allergic to sugar because most people, when you say I'm hypoglycemic, they, they assume you're a diabetic who's just um, having a hypo that they've overdosed on insulin or overdosed on their medication or they've forgotten to eat after they took their insulin. So you're not having a hypo attack, you're hypoglycemic, you're just making food choices and you say I'm allergic to sugar, whatever they give you that hasn't got sugar has got a good chance of being good for you. Eat before departing. So even when you've got an expensive restaurant and it's your wedding night and, or wedding anniversary or whatever, even your wedding night. <laughs> Eat before you get there, you'll be lovely and smiley bride and you'll be cheerful and everybody will love you and um, and you won't. Yeah, I'm saying, who cares, you know, if it's elegant food and you're not getting all of it, at least you're getting the right food to start with. Take some food with you. It says with your car boot 10A, you should have tin fish like ring pulls plus plastic forks in there all the time, maybe tuna or salmon or something that, that you, you don't mind. And you should have like a 12 pack of Smith's crisps. That way if you don't have money for the chicken shop or you just don't feel like eating chicken, or if you're at the party and if I haven't fed you for three hours, you make your, an excuse at two and a half and say, look, I, I just go to the boot. Gobble it down, come back and you're, 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 you're laughing. Anyway, that's just a little bit of a helpful sheet, I think, on the same sort of topic. Okay.